What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode brought to you by the League FFB. Today, we're going to be talking about my must-start and must-sit wide receivers and running backs as we head into week six of the fantasy football season. So as always, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. But without wasting any more time, let's hop right into today's video. And let's start talking about these must-start players. So the first must-start player that I want to talk about in today's episode is going to be DJ Moore of the Chicago Bears. And last week, DJ Moore, he caught five of his eight targets for 105 yards and two touchdowns in the Bears' win over the Carolina Panthers. Now, this week's matchup against the Jacksonville Jaguars, it is in London, and it gives us a lot of hope that there's going to be another big day here in store for DJ Moore in Week 6 because this Jaguars defense currently ranks dead last against the fantasy football wide receiver position, allowing 39.5 fantasy points per game overall to the position group. Now, DJ Moore is currently seeing a 26.1% target share in the Chicago Bears offense, and he has seven red zone targets through the first five games this year, meaning he's seeing a ton of footballs coming his way and is seeing at least one target with a high touchdown probability every single week. Not to mention, DJ is rarely coming off the field. He's playing an average of 93% of the snaps for this Bears offense so far this season. Now, the usage, the matchup, and the talent of DJ Moore are all lining up for him to have another big week for us here in week six. And I think if you're going to plug him into your lineups, we should be looking at this guy as a low-end wide receiver one here against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, the second player that I think we should be starting at the wide receiver position is going to be Zay Flowers of the Baltimore Ravens. And Zay Flowers has seven receptions on 12 targets for 111 receiving yards and one rushing attempt for nine more yards in Sunday's overtime win versus the Cincinnati Bengals. The matchup this week against Washington is everything we could have hoped for as Washington's secondary continues to give big days to fantasy football wide receivers every single week and is currently ranked 27th against the position. Zay Flowers has been pretty inconsistent this year when it comes to fantasy football, finishing twice within the top 15 wide receivers and three times outside of the top 40. However, he's still seeing 10 targets or more in three of his last five games, and that's been translating to fantasy football success. Even though Flowers doesn't have much touchdown upside this year, only scoring once so far this season, he's still operating as the number one receiving option in this Ravens offense, and this game should be very high scoring with a projected game total of 51 and a half points. I'd be more than comfortable playing Zay Flowers as a high-end wide receiver too, here in this week's matchup against the Washington Commanders, especially because their secondary is so vulnerable to the wide receiver position. Now, moving on to my must-start running backs, I want to talk about David Montgomery for the Detroit Lions. He gets a matchup this week at the Dallas Cowboys, and David Montgomery is coming off of his bye week here in week six and gets a great matchup against the Cowboys defense, who's been allowing big games to opposing running backs all year long. Dallas currently ranks 29th against the position, giving up an average of 25.4 fantasy points per game, and with Detroit being one of, if not the best rushing attack in the NFL, NFL, I expect them to feast here in week six. Montgomery has been super consistent this year, finishing as an RB2 or better in every single game and also posting a top 10 finish in week three. He's also found the end zone in every single game this year as well. And as always, he's not going to have much PPR upside. He's only seeing a 7.4% target share this season, but it's hard to find many running backs in offenses where it almost feels guaranteed that they'll find the end zone every single week. And with the projected game total in this one being 52 points, it does feel like a lock for Monty to come up big. Now, I strongly suggest throwing David Montgomery into your lineups where you have him and if you do decide to do so I would be viewing him as a low end running back one here in week six. Now for my last must start running back let's talk about Tony Pollard of the Tennessee Titans. Pollard is another running back who's also coming off of his bye week here in week six and just like Monty he should have some fresh legs and has a good matchup here against the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts are currently ranked 24th against opposing running backs this year and are giving up 23.4 fantasy points per game to the position every single week and Pollard has seen a heavy workload in his short time here with the Titans. Pollard is currently posting a 69% rushing share and a 15% target share, which is modern day bell cow levels of usage. He's also seen 20 plus opportunities in three of his last four games. And even though the game total isn't projected to be very high in this one, only coming in at a projected 43 points, the projected game script still favors Pollard seeing a healthy dose of rushing and receiving in this one, giving him some extra upside in PPR format. With two running back two finishes and a running back one finish to start the year so far for Tony Pollard, I would feel more than comfortable throwing him into to my lineup this week and if you do I would be viewing him as a high-end running back too in this week's matchup versus the Colts. But now that we've talked about the must-starts, let's talk about the must-sit players, players that I might be avoiding if I can afford to avoid these guys. The first guy I want to talk about is Brian Thomas Jr. of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And last week, BTJ, he caught five of his eight targets for 122 receiving yards and a touchdown against the Indianapolis Colts. And even though Brian Thomas has been super impressive to start his rookie season, 
This Jaguars offense is still struggling as a whole, and this week's matchup against Chicago is going to be BTJ's toughest matchup yet, as I expect him to spend the majority of the day shadowed by Jalen Johnson. Now, last week's 85-yard touchdown saved the day for Thomas from what would have been a pretty mediocre fantasy football day, but I'm afraid that without that type of big play again, BTJ is going to disappoint fantasy teams here again this week in a matchup in London. Now, I don't mind playing Brian Thomas Jr. if you have to due to bye weeks or maybe even injuries at this point, but if you do have to play him, he is a very risky option, and he's somebody that I wouldn't be expecting anything more than just some high-end wide receiver three type of numbers for my fantasy football rosters here in week six. Now, moving on to my other must-sit wide receiver, let's talk about Josh Downs of the Indianapolis Colts. Last week, Downs, he caught nine of his 12 targets for 69 yards in the Colts' loss to the Jaguars, and lots of people are going to want to force Josh Downs into starting lineups this week with Michael Pittman Jr. being added to IR because it does look like Downs should operate as the number one receiving option for the Colts in his absence. Now, the issue with this is that although Downs has been a good play the last couple of weeks, all of his production has come from Joe Flacco, who has filled in as the starting quarterback for Anthony Richardson over the last two games. Richardson looks to be trending up and looks like he should be back under center here in week six against a very tough secondary that currently ranks number one against fantasy football wide receivers, only allowing 15.8 fantasy points per game to the position through the first five weeks of the year. Now, it's worth noting that Downs is also dealing with a toe injury of his own, but I expect him to play and that could add another wrinkle into the mix here for Josh Downs, but if both him and and Anthony Richardson are healthy and available in lineups this week, I think it's better to just leave Josh Downs on our bench and not be fooled by the de facto number one wide receiver label. Now moving on to my must-sit running backs, let's start it off with Javante Williams of the Denver Broncos. Javante is actually coming off of his best game of the season so far, posting 23 carries for 61 yards with five receptions for another 50 yards receiving. However, this week's matchup feels much tougher for Javante Williams. Los Angeles is one of the toughest matchups for fantasy football running backs, currently giving up the third least points to the position position group, and this game has a low projected game total of just 35 and a half points, meaning this could be a very ugly matchup with long, slow drives by Los Angeles, resulting in fewer opportunities for Javante to impact fantasy football teams. Now, the one thing that could help Javante is the increased usage he's seen in the receiving game over the last few weeks, but it still doesn't give me enough confidence to fully throw him into my lineup. I would be looking at other options this week if I had them, but I understand that with bye weeks and with injuries, you still may be forced to throw Javante into your lineups. And if that's the case for you, I would be looking at Javante as nothing more than an RB3 type of flex play that really isn't going to have much upside. And now moving on to my last must-sit running back, let's talk about Alexander Madison of the Las Vegas Raiders. Last week, Madison rushed the ball 15 times for 38 yards, and he added two receptions for 23 yards receiving in a loss to the Broncos. Now, this was actually the most opportunity that Madison has seen all year, with Samir White missing the game due to a groin injury, and it does look like White will miss another one here this week, making Madison the RB1 again. Seeing Madison get the starting job here in Week 6 might give fantasy managers false confidence in starting Madison this week on their teams, and I would suggest to avoid doing this. This week's matchup against the Pittsburgh Steelers is a very tough one as they currently rank top five against the running back position this year, and with the new QB under center here in week six for the Raiders, there could also be some additional stress on the offense as well. Not to mention this is also a low projected game total at just 36 and a half points with the Raiders projecting as underdogs here in this one this week. Alexander Madison just has way too much risk this week, and although I still like him as the Raiders RB1 in other matchups this year, I would not be comfortable plugging him into my lineup here in week six. And if you do, I wouldn't be expecting anything more out of Alexander Madison than just some flex type of numbers here in this week's matchup. So there you have it. That is my must start and must sit players as we head into week six of the fantasy football season. As always, if you guys like today's video, go ahead and hit that like button for me. It is the best free way to show this channel some support. Also, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. That way you never miss any of our live streams over the weekends where we answer all of your start sit questions on a live stream on Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday, so make sure you're subscribed for those. And last but not least, make sure you are a member of the Discord. The Discord is free to join. I'm in there 24-7, 365, helping you guys. And there is a group of people that also like to play fantasy football and are a dope community here in the fantasy football space that also want to talk fantasy football with you and help you with your teams as well. So with all of that being said, I have nothing else for you guys today, so I will see you on our next episode. But until then, peace out.